Hey everybody, uh, Jim Neeb here again. Um, today I'm going to do a quick uh, CNC calibration video on my rotary axis here at my Abbott CNC machine. Uh, about two months ago I did a video for the X, Y, and Z axis um, and you know, how to get the backlash and, uh, and step accuracy to be fine-tuned as best you can uh, between the machine and Mach 4. Uh, Mach 4 has adjustments to, to fine tune that to, to get it as good as you, you know, physically can. Um, and I, at the time I left out the rotary axis um, and a couple of people asked about it and I'm getting ready to do a project on this now and just realized I still haven't uh, calibrated this axis. So this will be a quick video on just how I did my setup to uh, re remove as much backlash as possible and to get the rotation uh, accuracy or step size uh, um, as good as it can be. So uh, hopefully it'll be quick and uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's look at my setup here. This is uh, this is my setup for measuring the backlash. Um, this is a pretty new unit. I haven't done much with this yet. Uh, it's a planetary gear driven by a NEMA 34 motor. Um, there isn't. It's really tight. I can't feel any backlash in it you know, any clicking or anything when I run it each way. Um, so I don't think it's going to measure a whole lot, but um, we'll see. So my setup here has the dial indicator pointing perpendicularly into one of the jaws of the chuck. Uh, I've clamped a piece of wood in the chuck so that the, uh, so any of the slop is taken out of the, of the chuck jaw position. So before, without doing that, I could just easily wiggle this and get about 10 thousandths of of movement just because of the tolerances in here. So it's clamped down now tight. This is clamped down and I've got it dialed into zero. I've got my incremental jog uh, size set to one degree. So, so I can just simply jog it one direction and then, then jog it back and you can see it ends up exactly to zero and I can keep, I've done this a whole bunch today. It'll keep coming back to zero perfectly every time now to measure the backlash if it was if there was zero backlash then when i jog sorry when i jog the other way and come back i should end up at zero also and you see i don't i'm off by about a half a thousandth uh there um so you know i can come back this way end up right at zero and go this way end up at a half so that's actually not too bad um from the distance, I'm about two and a quarter inches or so from this chuck, so that translates uh, to something like 43 mils is one degree on on that circumference of a circle. So, um, you know, this uh, one or actually it's only half a thousandth of error here is only like um, 15 thousandths of a degree or something like that. So that's uh, certainly for woodworking that's that's fine um, but this is a tutorial on how to make the adjustments and the measurements so you know normally I think anybody would stop here as far as backlash um, it's just a good testament to the the nice hardware that Avid CNC uh, has for their rotor, rotary um, unit if you want to purchase one of those but um, I'm going to go ahead and try to tweak this in Mach 4 anyway uh, just for the fun of it uh, see if I can get it to be uh, almost zero okay so now I'm going to go to Mach 4 and look at the software settings and see if we can tweak that a little bit and and get this uh, to be slightly reduced all right so first thing we need to do is disable our axes so that or the hardware so that when we go into the configure menu now we can go to control um, first thing I want to do is make sure I know which motor I'm looking at here so my a axis is is uh, using motor number four so now I can go to motors and look at motor four and so you know there's um, zero, there's no compensation in here for backlash set to zero right now. Okay, so I played around with the numbers a little bit and it seems like this 0.1 units uh, in the backlash field seems to work. So I hit apply, hit okay, I went back and enabled it. 
and now I'll show you what that looks okay, like. Okay, now, before when this was going back and forth, it was about a half a thousandth off. Now, when I do an incremental one way and come back, I end up right on the zero. Can do it again. Then I can go the other way a few clicks. And back on zero. back on zero. So as near as I can measure it now, I have zero backlash. So that's how you do it. Um, measuring it and then going into Mach 4 in the motor settings and, and adding a little backlash. Now sometimes, you know, you want to, you don't really, without, if you don't want to do all the calculations, you could just kind of play around and put a number in and see what happens and try a bigger number so you can kind of uh, get an idea of what ballpark of the units you're in, you know, should you be messing with the tenths or the hundredths or the thousandths? Um, you know, I did a, I, I started out with the thousandths and added and added and it didn't really seem to make any difference. So I just went gross and popped it all the way up to in the, in the tenths and I moved it up to 0 0.1 um, and that improved it a little bit and then I did 0 0.2 and that took care of it. So um, it's pretty easy just to play around with this until you get a, a good result. Okay, so now here's my plan for measuring the error um, in the rotation travel um, direction. Uh, so what I've done here is clamped down a little piece of stainless steel uh, shim stock um, into the head unit. And I scratched a really fine line here um, in, the, in the chuck base. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is line that up with this. And then the nice thing about the rotary axis is you can turn it as many degrees as you want. So it's not limited like the linear axis where, you know, you may only be able to measure, say, across your four-foot bed because that's the extent of your X or Y stages. In this case, um, you know, if the error is small in, in 360 degrees rotation, um, I can get 10 times that error if I rotate 3,600 degrees or 10 times around. And so I can increase my measurement sensitivity just by doing it over a larger number of rotations. So what I'm going to do is line this up, set my A axis 0 to where this is lined, and then I'm going to rotate it 3,600 degrees. And, you know, if everything's perfect, this should have traveled you know, 10 times around and end up right back on this line. And if it's not, um, you know, if it's off a little bit, then we can make that um, that adjustment in Mach 4 to, to correct for that. So this is similar to the X, Y, or Z stage uh, travel calibrations I did in the other video. Okay, so I have this perfectly lined up, the, the notch in the line, and uh, I hit zero on the a-axis so this has become zero you can degrees. see zero degrees here uh, in my DRO in Mach 4 so now I'm just gonna rotate that axis 3600 degrees or 10 okay I jogged around. around in fast speed to close to 3600 and then I set my incremental to 0 0.01 degree and just stepped my way up into that to get this is about as close as I could get now so now we'll go look and see how far off. Okay, you can see this line now. To my eye, even with the magnifying glasses I have on because I'm old, this looks like it's just as well lined up as it was at zero degrees um, now at 3600. So I don't have to make any adjustments to this. Um, so I'm going to leave it alone. So that means that... Um, you know, the ratios of this drive unit um, and the step sizes and everything, uh, you know, are, are pretty much exact to what uh, Avid has plugged into the software. So let's go look at that and we'll talk about where we would have made an adjustment if there had been an error on this. So again, we would disable the drives, go up to configure up here hit control and then we would go into our motors and as we checked out before that's motor 4 for our A axis so this is uh, the 
counts per unit we would mess with um, this is this is where we had made our backlash adjustment before the counts per unit um, would be adjusted here um, I'm not sure why it has point one 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 in there um, it can't do anything more than a full incremental count to my knowledge because this is actually uh, stepper counts um, so that doesn't make sense to me but somebody probably just plugged that in because that was the exact math that comes out but you would basically mess with you know the the one and up settings here but again mine came out exactly right at least as near as I can see in 10 rotations and that is way good way more than good enough for me so I'm just gonna leave this alone so that's how uh, you would at least that's how the best way I could think of without having any kind of a precision rotation measurement unit um, the dial indicator worked great for the backlash I think and then just rotating many rotations to, uh, against a, scribe, a finely scribed line and a, a marker like that um, stainless steel uh, shim stock uh, really worked well so um, I'm gonna save all of this and that's my new setup for my rotary and um, if you have any questions go ahead and uh, post them in the in the notes below and uh, I'll get back to you thank you